What's up guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up lighting for an interior night scene using Vrenex for SketchUp. Let's get started. Hi guys, this is Ryo from iConcept Architect. If you are new to this channel, I would like you to hit the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell that will come up next. Without wasting much of our time, let's go straight into the video. As you can see right here, this is a daytime scene and I'm trying to change this to a nighttime render. The first thing we need to do is set this up as a nighttime scenario. So I'm going to be using the interactive render here so I could see a fast preview of the changes I will be making and I'll turn on the Nvidia AI denoiser and increase the update frequency. As you can see, this is still a day scene. What I'll do is I'll go over to the light settings and turn off all the light in my scene. But if you notice the image still looks good. Next thing is to go over to the shadow settings and lower the time of day until it's a night time. I'll turn on one of the lights in my scene which is the recess light here. And then I'll also turn on the rectangle light I have outside the building which I used to create the day scene. I'm going to reduce the intensity to 5. Next thing is I'll add a bridge tint to this to stimulate a light shining from the moon to bring in more moodiness into the picture. Once you're done, make sure you save this scene. Next thing I'm going to do is click on this icon here to lock the camera orientation so even when I move my scene the interactive preview still remain the same. So I'm going to add a mesh light to this light pendant I have here. First is I'll double click this until I get into the light then I'll make the light a group and then add a mesh light to it. But if you notice this didn't show up in the interactive preview, it happens most time when you're using interactive render. But to correct this, all you have to do is restart your render, then this will show up correctly. So for some realism, you can just rotate the pendant light here a little bit. I will add spotlight to these light features here. These are components of the same instances, so when I add a light to one of the instances, it will affect other instances as well. But before that, I'm going to apply an emissive material here. Open up the rollout menu and in the create tab, click on the emissive material and drag it into the material tab. You can always rename this to keep your model organized. Now the next thing I'm going to do is open up the rollout menu here and edit the emissive light. I will increase the intensity to 30. To apply this, I will right click on the emissive material I just created and I will click use as replacement. Then I will go over to the material I want to replace and right click then click on replace in scene. So this will replace the material in my scene. The next thing I'm going to do now is add a spotlight to the light feature here then I will edit the size to fit in the light feature. Open up the rollout menu here then I will change the angle to 30, the penumbra angle to 85, 
the penumbra fall off to smooth cubic the decay to inverse then i'm going to reduce the intensity to 30. i'm going to turn on the interactive render to see the preview as you can see it's not too bright so i'm going to increase the intensity to 50. I have a large rectangle light here that I will use for a fill light. So I'm going to turn this on and reduce the intensity to 5. Increase the spotlight to 70 and rectangle light to 10. I'm going to stop the interactive render now and test render this scene with all the components in it. First is I will go to settings, render output and change to a picture frame output. Then I will turn off the interactive render and change to CPU rendering. Make sure the material variety is turned on then switch from Nvidia AI denoiser to the V-Ray denoiser. I will click on the render button now. But if you notice the image still looks dark so what i'll do is i'll adjust the exposure with the correction control of the frame buffer so after a few corrections you can see the before and the after The next thing I'm going to do is edit the bloom and glare effect settings. Once I'm okay with what I have, I'm going to do the final settings and prepare my scene for the final render output. When the rendering is done, I will come over to the lens settings and further adjust the bloom and glare effect. Before going to Photoshop, you can always edit your image in the frame buffer. You can then import your image into Photoshop for some final editing. I have a video on how to edit image in Photoshop and I will put the link in the top corner. But if you want me to create a video on how to use render element for post production then let me know in the comment section. If you are just getting started using SketchUp then you probably need to join the SketchUp classroom. This is an online platform sponsored by iConcept Architect where we teach SketchUp from basic to advanced lesson. I will put the link in the description below so you check it out.
With so much being said, this is how to render an interior night scene using the Renex for SketchUp. If you enjoy our content, kindly support us by subscribing to this channel, like and comment on this video, also share this video to help more people render better. See you guys next time.